Question. Hold on one second. Yes, sir. Under Florida law, a person seems to have immunity from any prosecution under the state and ground law. I'm, I'm curious, you, you still haven't articulated what put in your mind that, what can you say about the facts that, that made you think that that immunity was waived and was not going to be able to be. I'm sorry. Covered? I thought I articulated very clearly that we don't discuss the facts of the case, and that's for a reason. We're law enforcement. This is the criminal justice system. People's rights have to be protected. And it's designed a certain way, not only under the Constitution of the United States and the state of Florida, we have rules of criminal procedure, Florida statutes and rules of ethics. So much information got released on this case that never should have been released. We have to protect this investigation and this prosecution for Trayvon, for his family, and for George Zimmerman, and that's what we will continue to do. I did not, Catherine. We don't talk to any defendant who's represented by counsel unless he waives his right to counsel. We never even had to address that situation. Yesterday, the attorneys who were representing Mr. Zimmerman, or at least speaking for him, said they had to defuse themselves because, themselves because they hadn't been in contact with him. Can you shed any light at all on how Mr. Zimmerman came to turn himself in? I Was cannot. It's a coordinated process at all? Can it's a coordinated it? process, and law enforcement has had this under control since we've gotten this case. And I know there was a lot of speculation about, oh my goodness, does law enforcement know where he is? Do we have this under control? This is what we do every single day on behalf of our community. It's what FDLE does every single day on behalf of the citizens of this great state. The governor and Pam Bondi put as much or as many resources as they could on this case. And I don't think that there was ever a concern that if the decision was made to charge Mr. Zimmerman, that it would be made in a timely fashion and that law enforcement would have it under control to take him into custody. Why would the state try, expect the trial to be in Seminole County? We don't know that yet. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. Okay. His former attorney said yesterday that he actually contacted you. Can you talk about what happened when you all received that phone call? Uh, what happens with every phone call? A message was taken and I turned it over to Bernie and Bernie so, handled it from there. But. Uh, we called his lawyers because, again, we don't talk to someone represented by counsel pursuant to our rules of ethics. So no contact was made specifically between Mr. Delarionda. Mr. Guy is, was, and is still prosecuting a first-degree murder case where our victim is a former Marine who was brutally shot for a few dollars at a gas station here. We have, unfortunately, brutal homicides that we fight hard for all the time. We will fight just as hard in this case. Yes, sir. The Department of Justice, thank you for asking that question. They conduct their own investigation. I've been in contact with Bobby O'Neill, our U.S. Attorney, Tom Battle, one of the Department of Justice um, people who's helped us with a lot of the uh, civil rights contacts and issues. Um, he's helping us. A whole slew of DOJ lawyers are helping us, but they're not working on our part of the investigation, and we don't work on their part of the investigation. We always share information with our federal counterparts on numerous cases when and if it's needed. You, you said you don't want to discuss the facts of the case, but, but by what the actions that you are taking, you are basically making a statement that you do not believe Andrew Brown is a plausible defense. Could you at least address the fact that you, by taking this action and by arresting Mr. Zimmerman, you are in fact saying stand your ground in your mind does not come to play in this case? This case is just like many of the shooting deaths we've had in our circuit. If stand your ground becomes an issue, we fight it if we believe it's the right thing to do. So if it becomes an issue in this case, we will fight that affirmative defense. How would you say stand your ground has affected your job? My prosecutors, and a lot of them are here, and I'm so proud of them, they have worked tirelessly running this office while we've been working on this case. They fight these stand your ground motions. Mr. Moody just finished a four-day full stand your ground motion on another case. We fight hard. Some of them we've won and we've had to appeal them or the defense has appealed and we've won it on appeal. Some we fought hard and the judge ruled against us. That's happening to prosecutors all over the state. It is the law of the state of Florida and it will be applied. Do you think it's involved too much? All right, and there Angela Corey, the special prosecutor um, appointed this case here. Thank you everyone for joining us. Obviously our format thrown out the window here tonight given uh, uh, the recent developments uh, that we've just heard here at the top of the hour. Uh, in short,
Uh, Mr. Zimmer is charged with second degree murder and to help us break down what that both means, how we got here, um, where this goes from here. And I should also note we'll be going from Florida where we just were to D.C. Uh, shortly in our nation's capital. You'll be hearing from the parents, Sabrina Fulton and Tracy Martin, the father of the late Trayvon Martin, uh, who are at a conference today uh, with civil rights leaders, uh, obviously speaking out on this case. We're going to get to all that, but let's first bring in our panel. We're joined now by Troy Smith, former New York City homicide prosecutor and now criminal defense attorney. Tom Doherty, former aide to Governor Pataki. Dominic Carter, of course, political journalist and author and a senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. And um, Troy, let me start with you. Uh, there was some debate about whether or not um, what they were going to charge with here. Um, and it really ran the gamut. Some people said they wanted first-degree murder. Some people said, hey, even manslaughter would be difficult. Second-degree second degree murder is what the prosecutor settled on here. For the audience who's not familiar, how high a threshold or how difficult a charge is that to prove? Well, every criminal charge uh, requires the same uh, standard of proof. That's proof beyond a uh, reasonable doubt. The distinction in Florida between murder in the first degree and murder in the second degree, which, uh, which with Mr. Zimmerman, Zimmerman is charged with, murder in the first degree requires premeditation, even for premeditation meaning it could be even be for a split second, a split second to think about it, whereas murder in the second degree does not necessarily require that premeditation element. So it's, um, again, but the proof has to be beyond a reasonable doubt. A lot of people thought manslaughter not just because it's a lower standard to prove, but also they said, hey, because in Florida, if it's under 18, uh, the victim, there'd be additional years that could have been added on to the sentence, and Trayvon Martin was 17 at the time of the shooting, and then also murder, uh, death caused by gun, again, is another element. With all that said, you a little surprised you went with second-degree murder here? Uh, I'm not really surprised at all. Um, under Florida law, in order for him to, be, uh, to have been formally charged with uh, murder in the first degree, it would have required... Uh, the uh, prosecution uh, presenting the case to a grand jury. Uh, Florida, actually, for all other crimes other than capital crimes, murder in the first degree being a capital crime, uh, Florida, all other, all other crimes, does not require uh, a grand jury presentation. The case doesn't have to be heard by a grand jury. In fact, all that's required is that the prosecutor uh, present uh, what's called an information by um, sworn affidavits charging an, a, an, a defendant with uh, the charged crime here, murder in the second degree. Uh, I'm not necessarily surprised they didn't go for murder in the first degree because had they done that, it would have had to go to the grand jury mm -hmm. where potentially Mr. Zimmerman would have had the right to testify in the grand jury and the grand jury may have thrown the case out. And I just want to give the audience uh, some information. Obviously, this unfolding right at the top of the hour, but we do know a few other things. Today, uh, Mr. Zimmerman uh, voluntarily turned himself in. He also has counsel. If you remember, yesterday we brought you uh, really a circus atmosphere, a dog and pony show. We had the two attorneys saying they hadn't been able to reach their client in three or four days, but yet their client, Mr. Zimmerman, was talking to Fox News, so they're calling Sean Hannity, and he says, I can't tell you what he's saying, and they're like, but he's our client. Or is he? Well, they dropped him as a client, but now he's retained Mark O'Meara, and uh, according to, uh, to folks in Florida in the legal community, he's a top-notch defense attorney, so he is counseled there. But in turning self in here, uh, there's obviously a lot of open-ended questions. For example, um, what do you think in this particular case, uh, the next steps here? Will he be uh, allowed to post bail? Um, will he can be released on his own recognizance? How does something like this work? It would be extremely unlikely that um, bail would be set in this case. More than likely, he's going to be uh, what's called remanded, meaning no bail would be set. That's pretty standard for, for most, most murder cases. Mo most defense attorneys will, will make what's called a bail application that their client should be uh, allowed to be released on some type of bail. In this case, if, if bail were to be set, I would estimate it would be very high into the hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, but more than likely, it's going to be be a remand status where no bail will be set. Um, I know, uh, obviously, uh, Ms. Corey, who we just heard from the prosecutor, has got a lot more information than any of us sitting around the table right now. But on the surface, you've prosecuted homicide. This is going to be, it would see a, a difficult case um, for a few reasons. First, you got stand your ground, the law that everybody has become aware of after this shooting um, that basically gives a lot more discretion to a person um, as to what they have in their head when they pull a trigger and whether or not, and obviously they, the police in uh, Sanford, Florida, let him walk that night without charging with a thing. 
And then secondarily, the police on how they handled it that night, they never tested them for drugs, for alcohol. Um, and if you're the prosecutors, you kind of have to recreate an event here with very little help from the officers that came upon the scene right after the shooting. Is this going to be a tough one to get a conviction? Of course, of course, I believe it will be. And um, stand your ground is a very, a very controversial uh, um, law right now uh, existing in Florida as well as a few other states. Um, generally speaking, um, the law of self-defense exists in, in all 50 states. Uh, however, um, an individual has, in most states, including New York, has a duty to retreat um, if they're faced with the fear of uh, death or grievous bodily harm. In Florida, uh, there is no such duty to retreat. So if you're faced, if you're faced with such fear, with the fear of death or grievous bodily harm, you, you don't necessarily have a duty to retreat, which is, which is kind of controversial and different than, than in, um, in New York as well as most other states. So it's definitely going to be an uphill battle, I believe, for the, for the, pro for the uh, prosecution in this case.